down thy boat! Hi everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name's Dave, and today we're going to be doing fluid exchange on this 444 International tractor. It's the same procedure for 275, 276, 354, 414, 434, 444, and 384 model tractors. They're basically all the same tractor. Uh, the 275, 276, and 354 models are 35 horse, the other ones are 38, and it's just the different uh, model year variations of them. Uh, same basic tractor, a few minor upgrades here and there along the way. So we'll start with the transmission first thing. Uh, I'll move camera around its own so you have a little better angle of what we're doing and we'll get started. We'll start with the two plugs under the center of the tractor. There's one basically straight down underneath the steering wheel and there's one about Oh, halfway back the footboard on the in the middle on the bottom you'll want to have make sure you have lots of pails available for the oil uh, when you fill these they hold about six US gallons or around 22 liters uh, and over time with condensation and possible ingress of water you can end up with actually more than that when you drain them so we'll get started uh, they are a square headed pipe plug, standard pipe thread, nothing exotic. Uh, I think like a 9 16 wrench fits them. I like to use an adjustable because it gives you a little more leverage. So we'll get some plugs pulled and get some oil drained. The third drain plug for the transmission grease is at the back of the tractor, directly under the PTO shaft. It's hard to see right here because there's stuff in the way and there's a, a, you know, it's in the shadow, but right directly under the PTO shaft at the back, the plug sticks out straight back towards the back. These two have finished draining, so we'll put our plugs back in. Wipe them clean first so you're not recontaminating the uh, transmission grease, the fresh grease that you're going to put in. Yeah. It's a good idea to examine the plugs because I see a couple little bits of lock ring down in there. So that's possibly a warning sign. I don't know, it could be something that happened long time ago I'm not familiar with the tractor so uh, but there doesn't appear to be anything any transmission issues right now so the transmissions all drained now all the grease is out and it's a good thing because you can see it was contaminated with water and so on it was kind of milkyish looking and it was actually kind of low, so it's been leaking somewhere anyhow. Uh, the first plug we take out is a level plug right here. It's right at the very front edge of the uh, footboard on the left-hand side when you're sitting on the seat. So we take that out. And that is the level plug. So you fill the transmission until it just starts coming out this hole here. Ah. The fill plug is right beside the shift lever. It's hidden from the camera view right now by the shift lever. But it's on the shift cover right beside the lever. And so we take that out. And again, these are just square headed pipe plugs. and we can start putting transmission grease back in. These use 8090 gear oil.
So I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's just starting to come out the inspection plug here. So you fill that, turn that in, and we have our gear oil filled back up. Okay, we're moving along now to the engine oil. The drain plug for the engine oil is just in the center bottom of the oil pan, and it takes a standard inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth end wrench. on these tractors are what they call either a cartridge or element style filter which means it's a paper element that goes inside this steel canister here there's a 9 16 or a 3 8 bolt up through it takes a 9 16 end wrench um, you want to be careful when you're taking these off because there's a spring and a molded washer in there that holds the filter up into place without those in there the filter just drops down into the can and doesn't filter any oil as you just getting the filter dirty and it's not doing anything for you. So you want to be careful when you take them off not to lose that spring and washer. Originally there's a little uh, uh, like a clip on the bolt that holds it but those can get lost. It's always a great job to get your hands filthy. Okay, so like I mentioned about the washer in here, somebody has pre-lost this one for us. Saves us the trouble of losing it ourselves. So I will have to go on the hunt to find a canister with the spring and stuff in it so that he has a filter that's actually doing some good for him. So uh, I'll hunt down one of those and be back. The filter canister seals into the filter housing on an o-ring so you want to change that every time. So you gotta make sure you get it picked out of the groove for it up in there. The replacement filter always comes with a group of two or three O-rings, so you pick the one that most closely matches the one you brought out, and carefully fit it into the groove in the uh, top housing. There it is. Make sure you wipe everything clean. I was able to find a replacement washer and spring that goes down in there for the filter to sit on. And then the filter goes in and you can see that holds it up above the edge of the canister. That way it holds it up in place against the filter housing and seals it so that the oil actually has to go through the filter, not just around it. Carefully tighten that back up. When you get it up close to the filter housing, make sure that it's lining up and going in the groove against the um, O ring. You, know, you don't want to over tighten this, or you'll crush the canister and strip the threads in the aluminum housing. Uh, And if it's still leaking after you've tightened it up, generally tightening it a little more isn't going to stop the leak. You've got a problem somewhere with the O-ring. Make sure you get that straightened out. So, 
Oil is drained, filter is changed, it's time to put new oil in. The access panel to get to the oil fill is up on top of the hood. It's got two thumb screws. You remove them and the panel slips off. And the oil fill is right at the front edge of the hood. Cap slips up. And you got room to put a funnel in, sort of. These engines hold approximately six liters, so we'll be using one full jug plus a little bit. We're now ready to drain the hydraulic system. You'll find the drain plug for that at the back of the tractor. Uh, right alongside of the top link hitch, uh, there's a drain plug here, and that drains the hydraulic system. So now it's time to remove and clean the hydraulic oil filter. It is at the front of the hydraulic lift unit, right here by the shifter on the right hand side. And it is in the steel suction line. It's held in on an O-ring here by the pressure of this rubber hose here and it's on two hose clamps. So the first thing we do is loosen the two hose clamps. And next, we're going to slide this rubber hose towards the front of the tractor on that suction line. I find a pair of channel lock pliers works well for this job. Once you get it broke free, you just kind of keep wiggling it and move it towards the back of the tractor, move it towards the front of the tractor. There we go. And you're going to want another drain pail down underneath your footboard here because there's always some hydraulic oil left in there. So now with the uh, rubber hose moved out of the way, we can grab on the suction line on the filter itself and just wiggle it free. Got to turn it up so it clears the other suction line. I don't know if you can see it in this light or not, but there's a lot of filings and dirt on that and you just simply wash that out with uh, gasoline or diesel or kerosene, something along like that, Varsol, anything like that, some sort of solvent and clean the dirt and stuff out of it. It's a wire mesh screen that you would reuse. We have a fresh clean filter now and I've wiped up the oil and mess around where it goes in so it's time to put the filter back in place okay so we get that in place we'll turn it back down around up and then we shove the rubber hose back on.
It's coming time to uh, refill the hydraulic system, so we'll put in our drain plug. And the fill plug is at the back of the hydraulic unit, right up at the top, right behind the seat. See the head out of the way. There's no dipstick for the hydraulic reservoir, so you'll want a long screwdriver to measure. You don't fill the reservoir full, you want three inches of fluid level, uh, which would be like seven and a half centimeters. Looks like about eight liters drained out, so. Yeah, that'd be about an inch and a half. So another four liters, and I think that should be pretty close. Yeah, yeah, looks good. We can put our plug back on the hydraulic system, and the chore is finished. Just time to start up and check for leaks. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can leave those in the comment section below or any requests for a particular video. I accommodate them if I can at all. This video here, actually, or at least parts of it, were requested almost a year ago now. So I apologize for taking low so long to finally getting to it. But uh, here it is. And like I said, any requests I get, I take them seriously. And if I can at all, I'll accommodate the request and try to do what I can. Uh, sometimes I just don't get the particular model of make of tractor in that, that people are requesting videos on. Uh, but I mean, I'll do my best. Um, anyway, uh, Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends. And as always, have a great day.